everyone, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about algorithmic fairness. In fact, we're going to discuss exactly what is algorithmic fairness. In the current AI ethics debate, fairness is generally understood as equal treatment or the absence of unjustified discrimination against groups or individuals. That said, equal treatment does not mean that everyone should be dealt with in the exact same manner, irrespective of their specific needs, objectives, personal attributes, or achievement status. To understand this point, it is important to stress the difference between equality and equity. Now, while equality involves the fact that everyone receives the same, equity refers to the fact that certain things or benefits are distributed in consideration that certain disadvantaged actors will need more than other privileged actors in order to fulfill the same goals. Fairness then has more to do with equity than just equality. It would be unfair, for example, to tax billionaires and poor people the same amount, right? So therefore, the idea of equal treatment concerns equality of opportunities rather than just equality of benefits. What this means is that everyone should be given the adequate resources, which will vary from case to case, that will enable them to enjoy the same basic rights and liberties as anyone else. For example, health, education, freedom of movement, access, correct information, these types of liberties. And they should enjoy the same basic right and liberties to access educational, professional, or economic opportunities, among other things. To apply this idea to algorithmic fairness, consider the follow following illustration. So imagine a variety of people apply uh, for the same job. And many of the applicants fulfill the same exact requirements for the job. They have all of the same qualities and they share similar eligibility characteristics in general, such as education level, years of experience, et cetera. Now an AI system is used to sort out the applications of those whose qualifications do not fit the job. And since their qualifications are so similar, you would expect that the applicants that do fulfill the job requirement would pass the first selection round and move on to the second selection where they may be invited to an interview. But this is not what always happens. In fact, often some of the applicants are uh, who do fulfill the job requirement are directly rejected. Now you're committed, as we all are, to the notion of being fair. So you decide to investigate why that is. And if in your investigation, you were to discover that among those who did not get the, the job interview or the loan or the approval or whatever is that issue, and in this case, that would be the job, um, several of the people who were rejected but still qualify share a particular attribute such as age or gender, race, social status, zip code, et cetera. If in that case, that's what you discovered, you would have a strong reason to suspect that the system sorting out the applications is biased against these people that share this same attribute, whatever that is. And in fact, this was the case in 2015 during an Amazon recruitment um, scenario. And this is one of our case studies, which you can click on anytime to find out more information. So here, the software learned to penalize resumes that included the word women. For example, women's chess club or women's polo team. And it favored candidates who described themselves using verbs more commonly found on resumes by male applicants. It is absolutely vital to stress um, here that the programmers did not intentionally develop a biased software. Women were discriminated against in this case because the program was trained on historical data. And that is often already biased against women in the tech field. So we can say actually and generally that machine bias is usually not intentional. Nevertheless, it is important to take special measures to avoid it and to ensure that different stakeholders groups are treated equally and have access to the same opportunities, irrespective of their gender, race, uh, age, race, nationality, sexual orientation, and so on. In fact, no matter where discrimination or unfairness shows in an AI system, any member of the team, not just the programmer or the quality checker or the data scientist, but any member of the team might realize or um, be alert to the mistake and to help correct it, sometimes even just by alerting the rest of the team. When fairness is a standard part then of the AI audit process, there is a greater chance of stopping unfairness before it makes its way into the final product. 
On the bottom of this page, you'll find some further links for reading on the concept of AI fairness. And whenever you're ready, we have provided some exercises to help you transform your knowledge about detecting unfair algorithm outcomes into actual practice. That's it for now, and I will see you next time. Thank you.